Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to add this little part before you listen to the podcast that, well, I guess it's a podcast that we're going to play in a second here. Um, I just wanted to say that this is kind of a new thing we're doing, Adventure Game Time, and uh, uh, there were some issues that I just wanted to make clear before you listen listen to the uh, podcast or whatever you want to call it, uh, proper, that's coming up in a minute here. Um, we did have some audio issues that didn't become apparent till uh, afterwards. Uh, this mostly had to do with some random audio volume spikes. Uh, I've been having a lot of audio issues lately. We're ironing them out. Um, I ran the uh, the audio file through like a levelizer and whatnot, so it's it's still there. It's not as bad as it originally was, but I just want to make everyone aware that uh, it is there. Uh, hopefully it won't be there in the future, um, but I think it's not too annoying now. The other thing is, uh, this is kind of a pilot episode thing for us, so we are a bit uh, disorganized, but please, uh, if you think this kind of thing has potential or you kind of like it, uh, you know, leave that in the comments. So, uh, yeah, this is completely different than mostly anything I've done before on the channel. Um, hopefully we're going to do more of them. It's, it's a good opportunity for me to ha kind of hang out and talk with friends back home. Uh, but yeah, this is just kind of a podcast thing. So it's just kind of a sit back, relax, listen, listen when you're going to sleep or in the car or something like that. So, uh, without further ado, uh, here we go. Uh, hey guys, this is something a little bit different. Uh, I'm calling this uh, new kind of segment uh, Adventure Game Time. And basically what this is, uh, I put this together because if you guys watch my videos, uh, you've probably realized that I moved uh, to where I am now a while ago. And uh, I don't have any friends out here. And so this is a kind of a good way to uh, kind of talk and hang out with some friends back home. And also play some uh, old big box not necessarily big box, but some old PC adventure games that, uh, you know, this just gives me motivation to play some of my backlog, which I guess it's weird. You need motivation to play something you want to play. But um, so basically what this is, uh, me and uh, my friend here, uh, I'll introduce him in a minute, both of them actually. We're going to play an adventure game and then we're going to beat it or try to beat it and we're not going to use the internet we're not going to use cheats or helps we can kind of help each other uh give each other hints um although in the future for the sake of these if we keep doing them i we might do a thing where like if, if we have to cheat to get past the point for the sake of doing this uh but we'll tell you guys if that happens um and that's pretty much the gist of, gist of it so let me introduce uh first i'll introduce uh my trusted lieutenant loot say hello hello yeah, and he... Oh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm Anthony, the trusted lieutenant. Yes, and um, he is actually... Uh, he's the one that also played the game we're going to talk about in a minute. Well, I'll probably be playing video of it right now, so obviously you'll know from the title what game we played. Um, and also with us today is Waylon, and Waylon has not played the game. Actually, he doesn't play many video games, but Anthony lives like a savage, and he lives in the middle of nowhere, apparently, where he has a data limit on his internet. So we have to use Waylon's internet. Uh, so say, say hello, Waylon. Hello, Waylon. Yes, and Waylon's also <laughs> drunk um, at the moment. I'm also or getting from tri -nerdiest. This is Justin. I'm Waylon. Yes. Uh, well, Remember Justin that, Whalen from that Dungeons and Dragons movie? Y yes. Um, so yeah. So also, I think we're going. We should start a fund, a fund for Anthony to get actual real internet. Uh, so if you have any, it's, it's, you know, it's not a matter go, of funds. It's a matter of <laughs> just the location. There is no. I mean, real internet. can you? Can you get, like, an unlimited data plan with the wireless? Or it's like that's I'm, all they offer? I am looking into something, but they're... The, you can get a the, satellite connection. None that's of what the companies I can, offer... Uh, but it's like 100 bucks a month. Yeah, satellite is really expensive. They have data limits, too. And, uh... Oh, it, it's really bad when I send you a game to, and you're like, Ugh, 128 megabytes. I don't know. Ugh. Sounds horrible. Okay, yeah, it is. Oh, anyway, all right. On with it. Uh, you let, yeah. Okay. The game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess we should. Yeah, get to I'm that very part. interested to hear about this game. I, I've never played. Okay. Um. All right. So the game we played, we we wanted to start out with something a little bit uh, easier. Uh, just since this is our first uh, first 
I don't even know what to call this. It's not really a podcast. So our, our first casting. So we went with uh, Full Throttle. And, gee, I should I should probably have the information up on this game to talk about it. But uh, basically, Full <laughs> Throttle Full Throttle was a uh, point-and-click adventure game from LucasArts. Uh, I believe Paul Schaefer was the lead designer, person that wrote for it, the game. And... Um, what was the year? 96? I, I'll have yeah, to look 90, it up. 96, I believe. Okay. Uh, yeah, Andrew, he has play... it on his notes. Oh, you do? I, no, I don't have that in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. With 95. I, I got it. With unlimited internet access, mind you. Waylon, how many drinks have you had this morning? Uh, plenty. Okay. Uh, so... <laughs> See what we have to do? You gotta get the internet. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> then you wouldn't have to deal with my drunk ass. Oh, yeah. I swore. Edit that. So the game came out in 1995. Point and click adventure. Uh, it's actually very unique. You play a, a leader of a biker gang, and uh, you know there's a murder that happens, and you basically have to um, exonerate your biker gang and prevent. The, 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 oh, apparently it seems like like one of the last bike companies or biggest bike companies from becoming the maker of minivans. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, let's see, where do we start? Um, well, uh, at the I, cool intro movie. Yeah. Well, that's the first note I have from playing the game is, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, I thought the intro movie was really cool. It was like, it was like, a. uh, a cartoon almost like <laughs> yeah i did i really liked yeah. kind of like the animation style I, I guess we should also point out the, that um what the hardware we played this on or the version because uh right. we both played the macintosh version the only reason we played the macintosh version is just because that's the version i had um and also on the box and material for it it says it's an enhanced version but um i have no idea how it is enhanced over the pc port um yeah i never tried or, to PC game either. So. Yeah, yeah, me neither. I, I'm guessing that would be maybe weird, uh, Macintosh version. It'd probably get kind of hard to get used to the one click instead of the two uh, yeah, mouse maybe just the con- mouse button for my Mac. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I was gonna say maybe the controls are a little different on the Mac, and they say that's enhanced. Uh, maybe it has. I, I don't. I tried to see if it maybe had a higher resolution. Um, the only thing I can think of that is was enhanced is you can. You could access the game straight from your save files, like you didn't have to open the game and then click, like pick a save file. You could just click on the save file and it opened the game to that right. file. Uh, maybe that—that's the only enhanced thing I could find. I mean, the, the, the uh, whole simple menu, auto batch. The whole menu interface yeah. was—it was designed for uh, a single mouse button. Like you just had to to mm-hmm. click and hold the mouse on an item, and then like just like any Macintosh menu, where you. You hold the mouse button down, then you drag the mouse to what you want to select. Right. Yeah, I played mine on a 300 megahertz G3. Uh, what did you play yours on? Was Did you use hard, real? I used hard, actual hardware. It was a, a, a Power Mac G4, I think one gigahertz. Did you have any compatibility problems or any issues throughout the play? Um, I, I had to, well, I, I had to run it in, in, uh, Mac OS Classic mode on Mac OS ten point four, right? So there's a literally, I had to mess with the the screen resolution and the colors, and I had to switch back and forth to the, the display settings in the game in order right. to get it to display correctly. Right. I just played it. I, I was playing it through eight point six, so I didn't I didn't have any problem. I'm trying to think if it froze or crashed or anything. I don't. I don't think I had a single problem through the whole playthrough. So, which which actually is pretty short for an adventure game, but yeah, we'll probably talk about that. But anyways, uh, not to get off <laughs> too far off track. Yeah, I really did like the intro. I like the animation style throughout this entire game, and the music too is really fitting. I forget mm-hmm. that the Jackals or something the was Jackals. the band they had. Yeah, something, yeah. something like that is the band yeah. who did the music. Yeah, it, it was really good because it was like a. The Gone Jackals was the name of the band, mm-hmm. and it, it was a rock band, and it like fit like the theme of uh, a motorcycle gang and everything mm-hmm. like that. It was re- it was really well done. Yeah. Interesting so. fact about Justin: he could pretty much <sighs> name any game based on the music. 
of the eight bit game. Is this true? Eight or six? <laughs> mostly. Eight. Well, no, it's mostly sixteen bit stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he nailed every challenge I gave him. Yes, th- thank you for that bit of trivia. So, um, okay. So, anyways, uh, I guess I mean I wish I was a little more prepared and had like points of points about the game that we could talk about. But I, we'll go through just kind of based off the top of my head since we're talking about uh, the intro and stuff like that. Well, how about like the overall theme of the game? Uh, what did you think of the overall theme? Just I the thought, arts direction. I thought it was unique to an adventure game. Um, I, I know there are more than just fantasy based uh, uh, like medieval based adventure games but that's mostly what i played before this is, uh, mm-hmm. is those kind of games like um, yeah like the king's quests and king's stuff quests like that that stuff are all like that. but then again mm-hmm. I, I played like space quest you know that's mm-hmm. based all in space but this uh, 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 this uh, <laughs> uh felt it, it felt had a different feel to it and then it, it, and i liked it you know and yeah it did have a di- it was almost like a post-apocalyptic kind of setting but it wasn't yeah so that was kind of interesting because it wasn't post-apocalyptic like you know you, it, 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 no. it like the backstory and stuff like things were still going on society's still running th- it's just it's just but it had that feel of it like real desert wasteland biker gangs um yeah. and maybe yeah, like a Mad slightly Max. Yeah, maybe like a slightly it, it, dystopic no, it future. Was just this, that's the way this biker gang lived out in the desert. And, yeah, it was just very desolate area that that it took place in, but yeah. it was pretty cool. Um, so okay, so we talked about the art style and the music and the theme. Um, what do you yeah, want to talk was, about? The art, the art was uh, mm-hmm. really good, but that, that around like ninety four, ninety five, ninety six is when. Uh, like Lucas Arts and Sierra, like s- stepped up in a big way on uh, on how much money they were spending on on art and music mm-hmm. and for their games, right? Because they, they they were having like million dollar budgets for video games, which you know before that you know it was like that you'd spend that kind of money on on a movie, right? And they they started spending it on the computer games, which you know it it looks really good, but. Uh, what ended up being the demise for these adventure game companies was the fact that they were spending so much money on these games, but they weren't getting the returns that movies would give them like the, if they were spending that kind of money. Yeah, they really started dying out around like 98, 99. Right. Um, but this, I mean, I guess, would you call this like maybe the golden age of, of adventure, like 95-ish, mid-90s? Yeah, mid-90s. Like That was like when the best looking adventure games uh, mm-hmm. were around and that and it might have been that they started to die off as a, the market just became too saturated or or I, I don't know or people just got more interested in the the first person shooter kind of games because those yeah. really come to become really popular about the 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 time that that um, adventure games started to die off Right. And I wouldn't really say, like, some genres really got kind of hurt with the jump to 3D, but I don't see why an adventure game doesn't work. I mean, Grim Fandango is a good example of a 3D adventure game that was pulled off really well. But, like, personally, I prefer the 2D, the art style. But speaking of... Yeah, no, speaking like the... of 3D... Oh, oops. <laughs> no, no. Speaking of 3D, there are some awkward 3D-ish sections of this game, but we'll talk about them. Now, how how detailed did you want to go into the game? Because I think, but when I was writing down notes as I was playing, like I, I wrote down like what would I guess be considered like spoilers and things like, and like as I was trying to work through puzzles, you know, I wrote down things and then I yeah, we can talk about we can talk about spoilers. I'll I'll add a spoiler alert or something at the <laughs> beginning. So, I, I'm yeah. So I'm not I'm not too worried about spoilers. So wasn't it so easy to get that torch though? <laughs> What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> he's reading my notes and he's trying to guess <laughs> what what happened. In the- True story. You know, Whaley, we I offer we offered to he- get help you play it, but you gave some lame excuse about how it won't work on your computer. You could have run DOSBox on your computer. And- that's what. Yeah, that's what I was telling him. He's like, like Dos- no, it will it will DOSBox overheat. Works great. 
Yeah. It barely uses anything. It's emulating a 386. computer's from, like, 2008, and I've spilled Uh, beer in it. (laughs) So, Uh, I mean, like, it has some issues. Right. It doesn't. Like, it specifically can't run DOSBox. It probably could have. It probably could have. Yeah. And, All right, so, but anyway. that was a fun story. So, uh, in my do you notes, want to talk about? Uh, I guess do you want to talk about like the the puzzles in general? Yeah, uh, sure. I I have some notes about like certain puzzles and what I thought of them, like um, <laughs> like the cabinet in Todd's trailer. <laughs> That's not a puzzle, Waylon. That's just something that was there. <laughs> um, well. <laughs> Yeah, one note I have here is one button mouse or one one mouse button interface takes a little getting used to. It's like at, mm-hmm. at first I, I didn't have a manual for the game. So, yeah. So I did I did I was trying to figure out by just uh, clicking around mm-hmm. on what uh, on how to play the game, and uh, eventually I went out and I I found I downloaded a manual so at least I could see the controls and things like that like. Uh, yeah, that could really come in handy, especially at later parts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the thing, the thing I liked about the puzzles is they weren't like I know some adventure games are like really illogical, ridiculous puzzles, but at least this one, like you kind of had a chance to figure them out. Like none of them were too like, like you have to put a band aid on a cat and set it on fire and send it through a <laughs> hole to to trigger something so the moon dips and it sends a ray on a certain spot and it opens a door or something. At least the at least they mine. were at least they were all fairly logical, the puzzles. Um, yeah. yeah, there was uh, there, there was a couple difficult ones that uh mm-hmm. took a little uh, took took uh, actually me like a couple of days and like turning the game off and walking away from it for a while. Yeah, I had the same it. To... I had the same problem. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think the ones that gave me the most trouble. The the beginning of the game, uh, the dog in the junkyard, was the first yeah. puzzle. Yeah. Because With... I kept, um, I mean, spoiler alert, but I kept trying to, at first, because there's a puzzle with, okay, there's a junkyard. So you get this junkyard dog after you, and there's all these cars, and you can go up. And it's not actually, like, obvious, sort of, that you can go up and go into this this magnet what the hell is that? <laughs> what was uh, Waylon's chair was creaking? Oh, uh, so it's it's not really made too obvious that you can go up into this big magnet crane, and um, so that was the first trick: figure out you can actually go up there. But then it's like, like what do you do? Because there's this dog running around in this yard with oh, cars. And it's like yard dog. He's yes. annoying. Yeah. Yes, he is. He is. He's Waylon's reading my notes again. <laughs> oh, he'll no, eat you. Yard dog is annoying. <laughs> yeah. Bones and like, all. I probably got chased and attacked by that dog like a hundred times before I figured it out because I, I could see. Yeah, and you can't skip the scene either. No, I, I could see the 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 magnetic uh, mm-hmm. yeah, car lifter. Uh, I could see it there, but I couldn't figure out how to get to it. And uh-huh. then, but uh, I don't know if, if earlier you had found what you needed to 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 get the dog inside the car or, or was it like. Or what? The meat or something? Yeah, there was a, a steak from... In the fridge? From the, yeah, from the refrigerator. Yeah, in that yeah I had that. Trailer. But I didn't know, like, exactly where to use it, so it wasn't doing anything for me. So, like, I kept trying to kill the dog. Like, I was trying... First, I tried to make a barrier with the cars, and that didn't work because it just runs through the barrier. Then I kept trying to, like, maybe you have to smash the car with or the dog with a car, and that wasn't working. And then finally, just, like... I figured it out, it, it, but it, it, that one was a little bit annoying. Yeah, it, yeah, it took a while to figure out. Like, I, I could get the dog into the car, and then I would try walking past it, and, uh, mm-hmm. and it would just come running out at me yeah. again. And you'd have to watch that damn video, so that FMV sequence, over and over. Yes, yeah. That's enough. I, I, which I that do wish they had long. a skip. Yeah, I do wish you could hit escape and skip that. Yeah. After you've seen it once, maybe. Um, I kept having to restore the game because after you used the meat to attract the dog into the car, mm-hmm. 
it would be gone from your inventory. Like it, wouldn't, <laughs> uh, it wouldn't reset. Like Lucas Arts games, uh, they're famous for you that you don't die. Yes, which is another nice reason why I wanted to use this game as a starting off point. Um, whereas, like, the Sierra games, you could get into a situation where where you don't have an item you need, and then there's, like, no way to get around it. Or Yeah, that or that really scares me the most about playing these or games. Or you could die, and if you didn't save at the right point, you could have to replay a large portion of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But where it was Lucas Arts games, they made them so that you couldn't get stuck, and that mm-hmm. you uh, that you that you, yeah, you never died. <laughs> right. That, that seemed like that that situation there is like you did need to have the meat, and you did need to have have the game saved beforehand. Otherwise, mm. uh, you lose it. You would lose it. And then now maybe you could go back to the refrigerator and find another one. I don't know, but I, I, don't I just know saved either. the game beforehand yeah. and uh, kept restoring the game yeah. over and over again. Uh, I'm trying to think of more puzzles. I want to save the mine road for a separate thing. Um, <laughs> that oh, deserves yeah. its own conversation. Yes. Uh, but I, yeah. I, that might have been the puzzle that tripped me up the most. Uh, oh, oh, the Demolition Derby. Um, I don't know if you had trouble with that, but I initially had a little bit of trouble figuring that one out. Yeah, cause, well, I I knew where I needed to go. It's just <laughs> the, the figuring out how to to get over there was uh, like I, I tried yeah pushing okay. cars around and stuff, and I and and I saw these ramps, but I didn't really know what to do. It, and yeah, it, okay, for you guys listening, there's a part where you enter a demolition derby, and you have to ram a certain car, but there's this computer-controlled car between you and the other car, and it, it does not let you pass. So you have to figure out a way to disable it. And first of all, the controls are kind of awkward. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just weird. But it's also weird, like, the first ramp, when you go up it, that other computer-controlled car, like, always automatically goes under the ramp so you can hit it. Yeah. Um, but it was just, like, figuring out where, what to do at that point. It's like, okay, I know if I jump up a ramp, I can, I can hit, I disable a car. But it was just, like, putting everything into position with the awkward controls. It was just... It was a weird part of the game. It just it didn't feel like that the demolition derby part really clicked well with the rest of the game. That and uh, the mine road, which are <laughs> yes, the mine they're, road, they're, but they're what I would describe more as action sequences uh-huh. than uh, than your traditional adventure game. Um, oh yeah, yeah. We'll awesome. get we'll get to the mine road in a second. Yeah. Um, uh, any other, are there any other puzzles that you particularly had trouble with or that you liked or any comments? Beginning of the game, uh, you as the main character, Ben, uh, you uh, your your bike gets wrecked, so you have to put it back together. Which you know, like and then you have, uh, you're at this this small town with the junkyard and everything, and and you have. This woman, Maureen, is a bike mechanic, and she's going to put the bike together, but she needs some parts for it, and, um, and, like, that, that's, like, I felt that that was, like, a traditional kind of, uh, hunt and seek, Mm -hmm. uh, adventure game thing, where you you have to find items, but in order to get the items that you need, you have to find other items, like, like, to get past, like, the junkyard dog, Oh, so you did ops you get gas from? <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the there's a gas tower which you think you would be able to get fuel for your bike mm-hmm. at this gas tower, but there's these annoying. Uh, <laughs> They're like redneck cops. Redneck cops and this helicopter shooting machine guns at you. And, yeah, uh, I I only got past that part by accident. Like as I was trying to run away, I accidentally clicked in the background, and then he went and hid back there. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I I tried a million different things there. That that took a little bit to figure out. Which mm-hmm. like even though I, I I labeled a lot of these puzzles as annoying, like the junkyard dog, like <laughs> annoying gas, cuddle. tower, uh huh, helicopter police. Like they 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 at least you know added some challenge to the game because some of the right. things were like you know, pretty easy. You know. And at least they were sort of logical to figure out. It's. Mm-hmm. It's like if you don't get them, it's your own fault. It's not like because it was real ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And, 
I know you had some problems at the end of the game too with the minefield. Yes, because I, uh, um, I knew what I I needed to do was get past this minefield, and mm-hmm. uh, and and get to the, this other biker gang's hideout. But uh, and I knew how to do it because I I had this box of uh, of mechanical bunnies. Oh yeah, <laughs> the bunnies in the minefield. <laughs> yes, and uh, uh, it's just, and I, I you know I tried you know a whole bunch of different things and it, it never seemed like I could get through the minefield so you know I just left the game for a while and he stole <laughs> the bunny from the souvenir guy yeah so did I <laughs> and um so I had to leave the game for a while because I, I kept trying different things like releasing the bunnies in different areas but they would they would all blow up like almost immediately and so that part you know, and you could only release them by the uh the minefield. Uh huh. Figure out that you 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 release them and then you you grab them back so that they're individual, not in in the box. And then you can release them one at a time and just sort of walk behind them through the minefield as you release them to find. Yeah, it was kind of it, it was kind of awkward. I mean, it just I mean I, I don't know how that was it, was kind of weird. It, and when they, they it made was, the the minefield. The way it was drawn, it was it looked huge. And like, uh-huh. how, how am I ever going to get through this with only like a handful of bunnies? <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird <laughs> sentence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how am I going to get through this minefield with just a handful of bunnies? <laughs> so, uh, but you know, eventually, like you only have to go like a quarter way through the minefield, and then and then the game takes over with it. So, yeah, uh, I was thinking that same thing. Sense. Um, another thing that comes to mind, actually, is the weird, like, the whole plane sequence at the end. Uh, like, where there's, like, a million options, but there's really only, like, one or two things that you need to click on. When, when, when you're in the plane? Like, uh, yeah, when it's, uh, when it's heading towards the bridge. And is this when it's after he- Boom Boom Brothers got flames in the car and burnt up? <laughs> yes, <laughs> so you're heading towards this cliff in this plane, the cargo plane, and you have to go to the control panel. And so there's like a million options, but you really only have to find like two. I don't know. It just felt like a time waster to me. Yeah. I mean, it was neat that there was like a billion things you could click on, but everything you oh, click on oh, would just be like computer panel. disabled or something. Yeah. It yeah. just felt kind of pointless. Like it just felt like a time waster. Yeah, and if and and the more time you wasted yeah. looking through all these options, it uh, it would you would run out of time and you'd fly off the cliff or. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. That was with with the truck, I think. Yeah, there was one with the truck too. Yeah, and there the were two sequences like that. And then the 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 con- converted plane had a control panel, and they were both <laughs> similar. You had to figure out how to. Uh, it was just like it was just a matter of like trial and error, really. It yeah. was just like a time waster, and it was trial and error. Um, the truck wasn't as bad as the plane, though. Yeah. Next time we we need to get some oil for Wayland's chair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other puzzles that come to mind before we want to talk about the mine road? WD forty. Oh, the mine road. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Not well. Yeah, it is spelled the same, but. Uh, anything else comes to mind? Uh, there's some some comments about the game, but we can save that for. All right, we'll end. we'll just, like, we'll do the puzzles. Just general then. comments about like the. the yeah, that sounds game. good. Yeah, we'll we'll go through the we'll talk about the mine road, and then we'll go through some comments, and then I think maybe at the end we'll do like a fast and loose grading. So maybe we'll just give it like a letter grade. Each of us, uh, we'll give it a grading. Um, yeah, because people love you know when you grade stuff, give it points. Keeps them interested. Um, so what, what the mine kind of scale are we using? Like one to ten? I'm think, or everyone does one to ten. I, you know, everyone stars. does that. I thought we could just do it a little different and go with the old letter grade, like A, B, C, D, F, and then we could use oh, okay. pluses or minuses. You know, if we think it deserves an extra up or down, okay. a little bit different. So I was I was curious about the scale. So yes, it's basically <laughs> like ten. Uh, yeah, well, Wayla, well, you could give it whatever you want, I guess, because you didn't play the game. You, you can give it what you think it deserves off what we say. 
And what I've read in Anthony's notes. Yes, his well-taken notes. Okay, so let's talk about the mine road, which is probably, in my opinion, the by far the worst part of the game. And uh, what that is, it's just, it's this on-rails pseudo... <sighs> stop it! <laughs> just stop! Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Solid fuel recent booster? <sighs> okay, let me start again. Uh, I'm sorry, I won't move. <laughs> all right okay so i guess we finally should start talking about the mine road which is like the by far the worst part of the game and it's kind of like this yeah it's like this pseudo 3d on rails bike riding combat action um scene so basically you 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 go onto this mine road and it, you can move your bike like left and right and you can you have an attack and you attack other bikers and um you have to like you have to attack them and then you get their weapon and you have to kind of do it in a certain order. Um, I don't. I, I had so much trouble on this part. Um, one because the controls and two just because it's like really awkward to figure out like where you have to hit. even if you have the right weapon, it's like where you have to hit them um, is real specific. It's just I I, I didn't care for it much. <laughs> Thoughts. Yeah. I I did not like the sequence at all. Like it was it was very frustrating. Like uh, and at, at first I did not uh, I didn't even know what I needed to get on the mine road. Because mm-hmm. uh, I uh, there's a character that you meet is the the old leader of the of the biker gang that your character is in. Mm-hmm. So his name's Father Torque, and uh, you meet him just driving on these one of these desert roads, and he tells you. Oh, the cavefish gang. He tells you <laughs> yes. which, which gang of bikers you'll find what things that you need to get. Mm-hmm. Um, which you, you need a, a solid fuel rock recoil booster. The, oh, and the goggles from the cavefish. The goggles from the <laughs> cavefish So Ben can see the cavefish cave intro. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And the, the automotive hover lift, which doesn't happen to be on the... Uh, mm-hmm the mine road at all anyway, yeah that so, took me a well, wait, bit to, to figure out too how to get that but then there's so you, you keep meeting like the same uh bikers along this road and you you have to figure out how to beat each biker to get the right weapon to beat another one and like it, it just it took forever that was another time that i had to walk away from oh yeah the game. I think is that the first message you sent me? You like I don't like the mine road or so. I got this. I yeah. first of all, I'm sitting there. I don't. I don't think. I honestly didn't think this was even going to happen because you know how we are. We come up with ideas and then we just never go through with them. So I'm. <laughs> I haven't played the game at all, and I'm like, it's just not going to happen. And all I get this text that like something like, oh, I hate the mine road or the. I find that I find the mine road repetitious and annoying, and I'm like, yeah. holy crap, he's playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> so I like like immediately I was like I run over, I boot it up, and I start playing the game to ca- catch up. Yeah, um, you said you, at that time you said you couldn't get past the junkyard dog, and I was yeah. Like, oh. I got that night is where I got I hit the wall with the junkyard dog, um, but yeah, I hadn't played up until that point, and then I was like, whoa, <laughs> he's doing, he's actually playing the yeah, game. I started I, playing immediately. Like, oh, I, see, said, I thought you were gonna pull. We'll, we'll play for the month of June. Oh, uh, I started playing immediately. Oh, yes. I thought you were gonna pull the a whale. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so this the the. Mine road sequence was a very un, a very not like an adventure game. Because yeah, it, it was it was it, tedious and frustrating. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's read. and God help you if you're trying to use the mouse as control. Yeah, that I I, I tried to use the mouse at first, and uh, and that was uh, more of a nightmare than trying to to use the keyboard. Uh huh. And like just well, using the keyboard, like like the controls just were terrible. And now I was I was reading online, and it said that the arcade sequence and the controls were set up, but uh, like they they used the same game engine that they used for Rebel Assault Two, <laughs> oh. uh, which is a game that I actually that had back in uh, ninety five or ninety six. Uh huh. Like you had to fly the uh, Millennium Falcon mm-hmm. through this. Uh, 
this canyon, like sort of like like from the movie, mm-hmm. and uh, and it was a similar control. It was it was, it was that makes hard. sense. Same company, but I I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, it was it was so hard to fly the Millennium Falcon, but it was <laughs> it seemed like it was a little easier than trying to control these bikes though. Yeah, like the, the problem. The problem I was having, like, even if you knew or you had a really good idea of what weapon to use on what biker, like, it was so specific, like, how you had to, like, there was the one biker where you had to throw the powder in her eyes. <laughs> and, like, I knew that, and I used it, like, so many times, but, like, because I wasn't, like, right on pixel perfect, like, th- using it, it wasn't, like, triggering her, her crash. And and I was it was so frustrating, because I'm like... Is this the weapon I'm supposed to use against her? Like it was, it's just, it was so. It, like I had to, <coughs> I had to keep texting you, <coughs> excuse me, for hints because like I just couldn't get it. And then you were like, yeah, you you pretty much verified that yeah, you use the the fertilizer on this biker. And I was like, I've been using it. And um, yeah. and then I finally figured like, oh, it has to be like precisely like you really have to get it in his her his or hers eyes. And um. And then even then the, the cave fisher, when you finally get to that, it's like you have to do it when they're in a certain animation and they're only in that yeah, certain well, they animation. Would, they, would mm-hmm. lean, they would lean down and uh, mm-hmm. when they were leaned down on their weird, weird ass bikes, they would, uh, <laughs> they, they'd be more vulnerable and then you could mm-hmm. attack them. But when they were standing up, they would they would attack you with like, a, you said it was like an oil spill. To me, it looked like a chain they shot out. Oh, I thought it was an oil spill. Well, but. Whatever it was, it would make you wreck. And, and uh, by them, but. did Wayland just fall down? Huh? No, he dropped his phone. I'm oh. playing games on my phone. <laughs> oh, are you playing full throttle on your phone? <laughs> no. Oh. Yeah. Um. All right. So I think. Yeah, I mean that. I think that's pretty good. We, I think we covered most of the puzzles here. So, do you just want to go over uh, general notes? Then we'll we'll give this puppy a grade. Sure. <laughs> um, well, like, I guess generally the game, game like it, it was overall, it was really short. Like, uh, and like, even like the 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 playable parts of the game were kind of short like, compared. Like, the, it seemed like the most of the game. And the story and things were made up of uh, of uh, short, you know, mini films. Mm-hmm. See, in between each of the the game sequences, there was there was a mini film, and that's that's where <laughs> most of the story, you know, it, you, know it, you got most of the story from is from these mini films. Instead of like in other adventure games, you you have to go around asking NPCs like questions and to find out. You know what's happening in the game, where to go, and what the what the background of, uh, of in history of the mm-hmm. world that you're in is. You know what what's going on. Where the well, this game, it was just kind of like these these puzzles and uh, action arcade sequences in between more pieces. Yeah, that of was the one of my movie. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad thing if one of your criticisms... I mean, it is and it's not, but, like, I felt the same thing that was short. And it's like, I kind of wanted more. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean... like there wasn't that much to do. <laughs> and yeah, a couple yeah. Of the, a couple of the things that you did have to do were really annoying to, to try uh-huh. to answer. So, uh... So, it's, I, it's one I, of those games... I really liked the, the, the mini-movies that, you know, that put together <laughs> were a whole movie, uh... Because you know, I like the story. I, I like the characters in it. Like, uh, like mm-hmm. it was a a well-rounded story. I felt. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I liked it. I liked the world and the characters. I just, I wish there was more. It was just, I guess, one of my biggest criticisms. It was too short. Um, I just, I wish, that, like I said, I wish there was more to do. Mm-hmm. Let's see some other general stuff about the game. Um, uh, I don't know if you you. Watched the entire credits as they went by. Yeah, with the bunnies at the end. Huh? Well, yeah, there were yeah. the bunnies at the end. <laughs> Where he rides off into the sunset on his bike, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I thought, yeah, I, yeah, Isn't I mean, that, yes, but I, I, it would have been cooler if he rode off on one of those big bunnies, like a big mechanical that, bunny. That would have been funny. But yes, there was uh, just some of the, like the the credits. Uh, 
Like, there was, you know, the regular credits, like, for the game designers and programmers and artists and all that. And there was also some funny ones, like, uh, Haitian Relations. And mm-hmm. then there was another person credited as did not work on the game, but wanted to be in the credits. Yes, I do vaguely remember those. I remember someone thanking their parents. Yeah, there, there was things like that. There was really humorous things thrown in there. And then mm-hmm. something interesting I saw from... Uh, reading the credits was that they had like really famous voice artists working on this game like, like wasn't Morgan mark hamill Freeman? in the game no. like uh mark hamill maria yeah. lamarche tress mcneely and kath susi hmm. uh, who like mark hamill I, i'm sure everybody knows who it, he, yeah i didn't i didn't i couldn't figure out who he was though in the game like he, it, whoever he, he did the voice like, of didn't Rip sound Burger, like him. The the main oh. villain. Yeah, Which, you know, I, I, it he, didn't he, sound he like him plays to me. Villains like in the cartoons he works on and the video games he works on. Like he's uh-huh. probably most famous for doing the voice of the Joker, which all of his right. villains are slight variations of that. Like if you listen to <laughs> how Rip Burger talks in the game, you you can pick up hints of the Joker in there. Like, Speaking of listening, what about Rip, that song Rip Burger? Bone to pick. By the uh, Gone Jackals. <laughs> Wasn't yeah, that what about awesome that song? A musical that was, music? The, the original music by the Gone Jackals, which we had mentioned before, uh, <laughs> came from their album Bone to Pick, as Waylon pointed <laughs> out there. Yes, thank you, Waylon, for that bit of information. Hey, I'm full of facts when I read <laughs> Anthony's yes. Lutz notes. Anyway, back to uh-huh. the voice actors, uh, like Maurice Lamarche, like he he did uh, voices on Animaniacs. He did a uh, uh, the Brain from Pinky and the Brain, uh, ah. and, and a whole bunch of other characters, like on a whole bunch of other um, cartoon shows. Tress McNeely, she did voices for for Animaniacs and for The Simpsons and for Tiny Toons and for. Hello, nurse. The, the did, did you know reboots. this off the top of your head, or did you look this up afterwards? Uh, well, I, no, he's literally sitting here with his I, laptop. Yeah, but he might have known it off the top I, of his head and I then did, wrote it down. I knew, I knew who Mark Hamill, Maurice Lamarche, and Tress McNeely are, and uh, although I didn't know her name, I uh, I know her voice. It's uh, Kath Susie. Um, she did the. In the game, she was the voice of Maureen, and I think, like, the reporter girl. Um, I can't, I'm trying, off my top of my head, I can't remember what the cartoon shows and stuff she's done. I think, I think, like, Animaniacs and stuff like that. Like, because around that time, you know, all these people were, like, working together, and uh, I guess apparently working for George Lucas at, at uh, Skywalker <laughs> Ranch. Mm-hmm. And, uh doing voice stuff for him like because they also they have all of them have worked on other games that from lucas arts and from cartoon shows that you know, that did their uh audio recording at uh, skywalker ranch and their audio processing there but no harrison <laughs> ford no no harrison ford but they didn't even have Harrison Ford in the Indiana Jones point and click adventure games i don't no. think so no they, which he was <laughs> He would have never Busy. Been, uh, <laughs> stooped to a video game? I think to, he broke a leg. Stooped to doing anything <laughs> beyond getting paid millions and millions of dollars. Mark uh, Hamill, so on the any... other hand, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll do anything it would seem. <laughs> <laughs> he'll do anything for a buck. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, yeah I, I did watch Yeah, I did watch the, the, the closing intro, but like I said, I... I was a, I, thankfully you're more organized than I am. Uh, next time, if we do this again, and I hope we do. I'll, I will be taking notes. Uh, but thank you for being more organized. I I do appreciate it, and I'm sure the yeah, the five name, people <laughs> out of whoever that decide to listen to this all the way through appreciate it as well. Yeah. And thank you, Anthony, for letting me read your notes and copy off you because <laughs> I didn't play this game. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're welcome, Waylon. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, I did enjoy the bunnies, though, hopping off into the sunset. And I wasn't too so, imposingly drunk. No. 
So do you have any other notes, general notes? No, like, look, my notes here, like, they kind of could be compiled into a walkthrough of most of them. Oh, yeah, like, there's oh. even cheat codes. Well, they're not cheat, cheat codes. codes. They're, uh, um, Possible safe codes. Possible safe codes. Oh, that yeah. part was way easier than I thought it would be at first. Because it's just, there's a part where you, there's like engine block and there's just numbers all over it. And one of them is like the password to a, to a safe. But it was just so straightforward. I was surprised. Like, it's just, it's just one of the codes. It's just trial and error. You just go through them all. But I was, I don't like the number stuff. So I was starting to freak out at that point because I figured it would be like a lot more like, I thought it would be like a piece of the numbers from each of the the codes Mm -hmm. and you had to figure something out to where they like you you had to solve another puzzle to figure out how all of them came together but no it was just super straightforward (laughs) it's just one of the codes and one yeah you remember my favorite uh puzzle game like this based on what you're describing the seventh guest it was a macintosh that was wait is that really your favorite (laughs) puzzle well no zelda is my favorite but well, it's one of my favorite Macintosh style from that era. Oh. I think it, that game might have came out on the PC for Most of these games, I think, came out on the PC first. Well, I had a Mac but, at the time, so... Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> so, um, I guess, are, are, do you have anything more to add, either of you? Or do we want to? Do you want to put down a final grade? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's all I had to really say about the game. I'm going to give it a C. Huh. Okay. Because I didn't any, any play pers- it, uh-huh. but it sounds cool, and I probably uh-huh. would play it. So I put it uh-huh. on an average list of maybe possibly playing it, but I probably won't. I, I okay. Since C is like straight average, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's some sound logic to that there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, there is. <laughs> um. So I I am gonna go with a B minus. Mm. I think the game was above average, but but like the like the length of it was you know it was too short and uh, and some of the uh, puzzles were well I wouldn't even call them puzzles that tedious where the ac- action sequences were the video yeah, was good though was was tedious <laughs> yes <laughs> so all right yeah. That's good. Uh, I think I'm going to do it a slightly better. I'm just going to give it a straight B. Um, just because I mean, I would probably give it a B minus two, but there were bunnies in it, and I really <laughs> like bunnies. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I have the same problem with it. Like, the mine road was terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the game would almost be better if they just cut that out entirely, but it, it would all, obviously would have been better if they replaced it with, like, a different kind of puzzle that wasn't the mine road. Yeah. Um, or if, the, the if, demo- well, if the controls were better, that too, that would have, that it too. wouldn't have been such an issue. But the controls mm-hmm. were terrible. Like compared to the other parts of the game, the mine road did not look as good. As, no. As well, the- it's the same with the demolition derby. It was really jarring because it was a different. It was like a really weird pixelated look, mm-hmm. and it was a different sort of. It was like an overhead view. Now the derby wasn't nearly as bad as mine road, but I still yeah. didn't like it. So I think like things like the mine road and the derby kind of take it down from being a really great game, and um, all the length. Like yeah, also the length is just too short. Yeah. I mean, I, I would like more meat on the bone. For, for full throttle, the, the, the good voice acting though. On the on the uh, plus side, I really like the vo- Rip Burger. And uh, what <laughs> yeah, else? The, the production Just, uh, value was was great. Like the the voice acting, the music, the the artwork, like it all, mm-hmm. and the sound effects, like it all, all that production value was really good. But uh, so right. game wise, you got a and B I I do a... and a B, but video wise and art wise, it's an A. Yeah, I'd say. It's, yeah, if we were splitting it things up like that, I would give it like an A for just like the art direction and sound design. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, it was just just a little bit too short. There's a couple things that really kept it from being like really really good. So, I mean, if this game was just longer and some of the areas were tweaked a bit more, it it could have p- potentially been a really like a a true masterpiece of a game just i mean on the the setting alone was kind of different and interesting so so 
All right, guys. Well, so there's the scores. I, I gave it a B. Uh, the lieutenant gave it a B minus, and uh, Waylon gave it a C because he didn't play it. So that C is the default grade if you don't play it. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If if you've listened all the way through, or if you skipped around, if you get to this point, if you did enjoy it, uh, please post comments. Um, although to be honest, it. Yeah, your comments for this video, doing them if we enjoy them. Yeah, but, uh, some, but that's some what... helpful. Uh, uh, helpful it's like whose lines that, is so it anyway? Have, so we can points improve, don't matter. So we can approve <laughs> yeah. the next one, like some 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 helpful yes. pointers. Uh, and I need yeah, some yes, WD forty for my chair. Yeah, we'll need some WD forty. And uh, if you put in the comments if you guys liked it, uh, please. Um, uh, we're not necessarily motivated doers, so I, I'm sure some positive comments will uh, help encourage everyone to, to do more of these and refine them. So please give us some suggestions, uh, positive input. And that's that's kind of the one, the plus side about doing these videos with like uh, like older computers and stuff, because my subscriber base tends to be a little bit older and a little bit more mature, so you don't get as many uh, you know trolls and whatnot, so that's always good kind of content please subscribe um please like i said give us some pointers comments uh constructive criticism uh in the comments we really would appreciate that